All right, folks, so in today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about testing directional antennas, specifically hex beams like this one. And I always point the wrong way, like that one. That's one that my buddy Chuck, KK6 USY Ham Radio Ventures, built. Uh, you can check out his channel, and he's got tons of hex beam content. But anyhow, somebody reached out to me and they said that they did a homebrew hex beam and they weren't convinced that it was getting the directional power that uh, they anticipated. So talking about hex beams, they give you about 6 dB of gain, and then there is a front-to-back ratio of about 20 dB. So that means the signal coming off the front is about 20 dB stronger than the signal coming off the back. But the 6 dB of gain is how much you amplify your signal moving forward because of the directionality inherent to the antenna design. Now you say 6 dB, that's about an S unit on your radio meter when you take a look at that. But let's talk about what 6 dB really means. So if you have a 100 watt uh, output from your radio going to your antenna, assuming that you don't have lossy coax and all that other stuff, if you have 100 uh, watts making it to your antenna, a 3 dB increase would make that 100 watts seem like 200 watts. 6 dB would then take that uh, 100 watts and make it look like 400 watts of output. So it's a significant boost. Anyhow, let's go ahead and get started. Let PCBWay.com help you with your next project. They've got everything from PCB services, assembly services, 3D printing, and CNC milling. And they got fast and affordable shipping. PCBWay.com's online quoting system makes it fast and easy for you to estimate your project needs. And if you have any questions, check out PCBWay.com's online help center. It'll get you the answers that you need. What are you waiting for? Go to PCBWay.com now. Okay, so here's a copy, slightly edited, of what was sent to me. And I just want to mention that I don't think English is this person's first language. And they said, really love your videos. They are well explained. Well, thanks. I'm glad you like them, and I'm glad you enjoy them. Do you consider making a video on how to tune a hex beam or Yagi? I have a hex beam that I made from scratch, but have difficulties tuning with my Nano VNA. It looks like the reflector isn't working as supposed. I use Grid Tracker and can see that my signal is not forwarded to one direction, although I respect the length of the dipole and reflector wire. And so there's a couple of things to unpack here. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about the Nano VNA because that was mentioned in the comment. And so when you take a look at something like this, this Nano VNA is used to measure the characteristics of an antenna. And you can get your SWR over a range of frequencies or sweep. And what that will do is tell you what frequencies your antenna would perform best. You can also use the Smith chart function to find out if your antenna is actually resonant from a reactant standpoint. Now, I'll include a link to a video on impedance and reactance below, and you can watch that to understand a little bit more about that. But I also want to talk a little bit about another tool that sometimes gets used, and this is a field strength meter that I made. And what this d does is it detects RF in the air. And when you have a directional antenna, you can put a field strength meter in front of your directional antenna and get a relative reading. And so this meter will move and say, hey, there is a signal here of this strength. And then you'd be able to use this to either rotate your antenna or move this around your antenna. And you should see the power output on this meter change with the gain of your antenna. And so we talked about the front to back ratio. The signal coming off the front of your antenna should be about 20 dB stronger than the signal coming off the back of your antenna. Now this measures microamps and that is just a, and a, it's not, it's not a DB level, but you'd be able to see that there's a difference between the front and back of your antenna. And that may help you decide if you need to tune or adjust your director and your reflector. Those are the components in a directional antenna. Oh, I forgot to mention, this is a really easy project. It was simple to build, and you don't have to put it in a box like this. You can actually, instead of using this meter output, use a multimeter. And I'll have a link to how I built this below, and you can check that out as well. Okay, so the viewer talked a little bit about using Grid Tracker, and apologize for the quality of this picture right here. This is taken off of the Grid Tracker uh, Wikipedia site. And then what you can see here is, is that it looks like this person is in the central North America and you can see where their station is located and you can see all the contacts they've made in various directions. 
And this is a really handy tool and I'm not hating on it, but what I am saying is, is that sometimes this can be a little bit deceiving because of the projection of this map, the way the map is predicted, isn't exactly uh, the same as the shape of the earth. And as a result, you get some distortion here. But you can see the different directions, kind of, of the way that your antenna is working. But that also depends upon people working those frequencies at the same time with similar band conditions. So it can be a little bit misleading is not exactly the best way to test this. So what I wanted to do is I want to talk a little bit about uh, what we call an azimuthal map. I think I said that correctly. But anyhow, what this does is it takes your location and puts it at the center of this projection, and then it gives you a 360 degree um, uh, ruler, I guess is the right word, uh, measurement in each direction. And what you would do is you would use the azimuthal map to find a point where you wanted to contact, and then you would use this degrees along the, along the outside of the map, along with a compass to orient your antenna to point in that particular direction. Now, the reason I'm talking about this and recommending this is because we're going to talk about using a web SDR at a particular location to measure our signal strength. Um, but first, let's take a look at where I got this as Muthal map and show you how to do it. Okay, I'll have a link to this website in the description as well. There's going to be a lot of links down there. But uh, there's a ham, NS6T, and he created this tool, which is fantastic, that allows you to get your own custom azimuthal map. So I'm just going to do a quick demonstration. So over here in this location, let's just type in Denver and go CO, Denver, Colorado. Okay, I put in Denver, Colorado, and there's a couple of different options. Like you can label cities or countries, states. Uh, you can view in a browser. There's all kinds of stuff. You can turn latitude and longitude grids on, all kinds of things that you can do, but I'll let you play around with this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a create map. And uh-oh, I get a server error. Let's see if we can reload this. Let me take out Colorado. Maybe that was causing a problem. So let's just go ahead and do this again. Create map. So this is the entire earth. And then you can see here that we have our location. Denver is right at the center. And what I can do is I can zoom in on this and see things. Now, if I wanted to point towards a particular direction, like say Australia, I'm going to say the center of Australia, I would rotate my antenna to 270 degrees and that would point right to here. Now, if it was on the eastern edge of Australia, maybe I would want to be somewhere between 260 to 250 degrees. But that's kind of how you use them. And what I can also do is I can come over here and I can change the distance. So let's just say we're doing 5,000. This is in meters. It's in kilometers, I mean. Uh, I wish they used the American standard regular imperial system. Anyhow, let's go ahead and create map. And you can see that this is a little bit closer up uh, view of where we are. Again, the reason I'm showing this is that you can use this tool to be able to find the direction that you want to point your antenna on so your signals go where you want. Now, what I would suggest if I was testing a directional antenna is, is that I would go to this website, websdr.org, and you can uh, pick, uh, folks share their SDRs on the internet, and you can use them to listen to signals. And this is an easy way for you to listen to your own signal. Now, I get that there's other things like Kiwi SDR, and there's other um, SDR type tools that you can use, but this is the one that I use. And you can come over here and you can filter any band. So for example, we're talking about 20 meters and then you can pick any region. I would pick North America, but if I was in Europe, I might pick Europe. So let's go ahead and pick North America. And then if I take a look at this, uh, there is an SDR in Milford, Pennsylvania. So what I can do is I can listen to signals here in this SDR and I can listen to how strong my signal is. So theoretically, if I point my antenna at this SDR and it can hear my signal, I would get a meter reading down here on this S meter. And then what I would do is maybe rotate my antenna 180 degrees in the other direction. And I would see what the difference between the meter readings are when I transmit. 
Now, in theory, you could be operating long path or your signal goes the long way around and uh, you might be getting picked up that way too, but maybe it's unlikely. And if that is something that you're concerned about, maybe you operate at a little bit of a lower power level. Now, I get that propagation isn't entirely dependent upon power, so take it easy on me in the comments. But that's one way that you could do this. Also, you would have the ability to use other web SDRs in other locations to replicate your test and see if you can get... Uh, if you can get your signal reading and then do the comparison that way. If that doesn't work and you're still not seeing a difference, I would check out this website. This is hexbeam.com. And I actually asked my buddy Chuck that I mentioned earlier, what was a good place to go to get hex beam information for roll your own hex beams? And he directed me to this website. And one of the things I was going to do is go over to the specs tab and taking a look at this, he talks a little bit about wire elements and spacing. So that might be something you want to take a look at just to make sure that the design that you used for your hex beam is sound. Uh, keep in uh, mind that this is for PVC insulated wire lengths. So the coating or the jacket on your wire can change the velocity factor of the current that travels through your wire. And with, as a result, the lengths might be a little bit different. He also includes bare wire lengths and talks a little bit about the construction methodology here. So it might be something you want to check out. Anyhow, I hope that helps, and that's just how I would test to see if my directional antenna is working as I expected. Thanks for watching, everybody. I totally appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond.